Okay, let's get real here. From Software makes some fucking weird games. Yeah, they might have made a name for themselves with the Dark Souls series, and trust me, we'll get to them, but FromSoft seem to always throw a quirky spin into their titles. I think my review of Metal Wolf Chaos, which you can check out here, was a little peek into how batshit these Japanese developers are. Especially for Metal Wolf with the over the top action and the best slash worst voice acting in video gaming history. And yes, they was also known for their Armored Core series, which played it more straight faced. But I don't know, just From Software have made some of the most out there, wacky and head scratching games I have ever played. So that brings us to the game in question today, a conventional JRPG, Enchanted Arms. Let's boogie! Um, yeah, right. Enchanted Arms was released on the Xbox 360 in 2006 and the PlayStation 3 in 2007. It was also the first Japanese role playing game on both systems. This is odd to me because the Xbox 360 at launch was a western centred games console and that dude bro stereotype that tarnished the system years later was not present. So the 360 at launch and the first year of the console's existence, the games library was quite bland and was banking on sequels rather than completely new ideas. And Enchanted Arms being a new franchise and a JRPG stuck out like a sore thumb in the haze of sports games and other genre titles. Alright granted back then I didn't give this game a look as I was playing Perfect Dark Zero, Call of Duty 2 and Condemned at the time. Plus I was in my own personal burnout when it comes to role playing games in general and I wasn't really jumping over people to buy this game on launch day. So that being said, let's get on with the game. Enchanted Arms puts you in the shoes of a happy-go-lucky idiot called Atsuma. On another day at Yokohama High School of Enchanters, place Harry Potter joke here. Of course our hero is too busy trying not to learn, which gets the attention of Professor Ku, who totally doesn't look like a bad guy. Anyway, he gets fed up with Atsuma sleeping in his lessons, so he gives his young whippersnapper a lesson by putting him into harm's way. Christ, just call it Battle Royale. Anyway, you are quickly introduced to his friends, the nerdy heartthrob Toya and... Uh... I made enough for Toya too. You poor thing, only able to order garbage. Certainly nothing compared to my extra special Makoto love lunch. Look all you want, you aren't getting any. I got up early this morning to make that lunch for Toya. The finest, most carefully selected prawns for the sushi. Scallops and a rich mushroomy cream sauce. Oh wow. Now, the stereotype of the Japanese RPG of a group of androgynous teenagers fighting the god is well known, but this is the first time I've actually seen an actual androgynous teenager in a JRPG. Okay, Makoto is camper than a summer in Skegness, and he has a complete throbbing boner for Toya. But I have to give it to From Software to have the balls to have an openly gay character in their game. Yeah, he might be the comedic relief, which might piss some people off, but hell, all the characters are at the top, so I can let it slide. So after a light lunch, or as Makoto would say, a love lunch, ick, Atsuma wants to skip school to attend a festival. Of course, the others are hesitant, but soon jump to the idea. At this said festival, Atsuma wants to enter a golem tournament. And after some busy work, you enter this said competition to encounter another one of your cohorts, a young squeaker called Yuki. This delightful slice of fan service is a golem hunter with three goals in life. Money, the want for more money and the solemn need to acquire more money. So in this world, she's the equivalent of Marky Mark. After some posturing between Atsuma and Yuki, an earthquake starts to tear the arena apart and it seems that the seismic movement has caused Yokohama's mechanical helpers, called golems, to turn on humanity and they start to remove towards the school. 
Of course, our trio are shocked and decide to go to the college to investigate. After quickly discovering a secret laboratory under the school, probably funded by Umbrella, Atsuma discovers that he has an enchanted arm. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Maybe it's a giveaway on the bloody title, but I digress. Atsuma learns that his arm can speak to him, telling him to move forward towards the inner chamber, and like his sole personality trait, the moron makes his way towards the center of the lab. And what the team encounters inside this room is the frozen throne of the Ice Queen. <laughs> wow, that is exquisite writing there. Okay, crappy name to one side, I kind of like the frozen bint. Anyway, our chilly monarch is known as a Devil Golem. A relic of a battle known as the Golem War from a thousand years ago. And these said Devil Golems were made by humans in order to end the war. But then they quickly realised that these Golems were gods of magic and cannot be killed. Yeah, a bit of a design flaw there, boys. So instead they stored them in vaults across the world and their magic cores, their batteries, removed to put them into a deep sleep. And our heroes have just woken up one of these said bad guys. Yeah, great idea. After quite a fun battle, our icy antagonist kidnaps Toya. And don't worry if you forget this plot point because Atsuma will remind you every 10 cocky minutes. Toya! Toya! Toya, snap out of it! Yes, okay mate, we get it. After seeing this, Mikado is angered by his crush being abducted and tries to attack the Ice Queen, which leads good old Queenie to drop an ice cube on his head. Damn, that's cold. Oh, oh, hey, hey, here comes the no scene. Toya! Mikado! Nice. I will say what follows is a pretty badass cutscene of the Ice Queen laying waste to Yokohama. Alright, I'll say it again, she has a terrible name, but she isn't scared to commit mass genocide. My kind of woman. The story that I'm telling you right now is the first few hours of a quite lengthy adventure, so I don't want to bore you with all the details. All I will say is that most reviews I've seen of Enchanted Arms points to its storyline being bad. And yeah, I will say it isn't the most complex plot I have ever seen, but it kept me invested for over 30 hours of gameplay, so maybe I have a high tolerance to turd or this game has more to offer than at first glance. And to be honest, it does. Which leads us to the voice acting, and the English dub is really, really bad. But I fucking love it. What? What the? What the indeed? Get some manners, kid. You're looking for the ascetic monk, right? That's insane! This is Rygar we're talking about! Huh. Is that such a strange thought? That I might be engaged? But Rygar! Rygar? Rygar Rygar? I mean, I, well, I thought that... Well, the, the women didn't interest you. Really? What does that mean? Well, you don't pay them much attention. And you're like... A father figure to me, but sometimes, you know, when you look at me, or maybe some moisture around the eyes, perhaps. Excuse me? Yeah. I heard that was quite common among knights. You know. Really? Rygar? I don't know what he's talking about. I'm straight as an arrow, my lady. It gives this game a Saturday morning cartoon vibe, and I could honestly see this game on TV programmed next to Captain Planet and the Power Rangers. And in places, I laugh my ass off, both intentionally and not. I'd say the script is pretty solid, but the... I think the dialogue itself was lost in translation, but man, I was having a blast. And this, to me, brings this game from a pretty by-the-numbers JRPG to something quite special. This is where From Software starts to twist the weird knife into your brain. Any game at this point in time with this type of voice acting would have damned it to the bargain bucket of eternity. But somehow, in some way, for this game, this type of performance makes total sense in Enchanted Arms. And it makes it stand out from the other contemporaries at the time. This is a total cartoon, and yeah, it could have been dark and brooding, but then the cheeky charm would have been lost. For Enchanted Arms, it's better just to go with the story rather than the fight against it. And speaking of fighting, let's talk about the battle system. Enchanted Arms has a tactical approach to its gameplay. Yes, it's not Disguise or Final Fantasy Tactics, but 
but I like how the battles play like an angsty version of chess. The golems also come into play in a Pokemon style way, where you can call upon and collect over 100 of them to fight by your side. But honestly you only need a handful of them to be successful and then once you gather a full party of main characters, the golems become obsolete and only used in a handful of encounters. Now I praise the battle system because yeah it is quite good, I will say you can outlevel your foes really easy, leaving the fights to be a complete cakewalk. The only times I actually died in this game was when I was in a super hard side dungeon called the Holy Beast Shrine, more on that later. But to alleviate the tedium, Enchanted Arms has an auto battle system, making these trash fights and random encounters pass very quickly. Speaking of convenience, Enchanted Arms supports saving anywhere, which is great for people who hate save point systems in most of these games, like I do. Plus your health and stamina get restored between each fight, which cuts out the downtime. But all this battling is for now, because once you win a fight, you gain experience points and of course level up. And on the subject of levelling, Enchanted Arms does follow the standard experience gathering like most role playing games, you gain a level, your stats go up, simple stuff. But From Software spits on your conventions daddyo and implements skill points. With every fight you win you gain SP or skill points to spend on increasing your stats and learning new skills. Ok, skill points have been used in games before, but this game completely tips a difficulty balance in your favour as you boost your main stat of your character of choice way beyond their standard levelling system. And what makes this even more problematic and kind of a joke, is that you can exploit an oversight in the in-game casino, where you can spend chips on items to sell for double the price in the standard shops in the game. With this said cash you can buy items that give you SP to spend on your characters making them even more overpowered, but this is optional, if you don't want to do this then it's totally up to you. Another head scratcher I might add is vitality points. Now with games of this nature the grind of levelling will happen sooner rather than later, I like to grind myself. But with VP you are capped on how much you can do, let me explain. So with every fight and every turn in this said fight, you lose vitality points with every passing round or if you die in combat. And once you hit zero vitality points your health and endurance will go down to a single point each. Granted using the main characters it will take a huge amount of bad luck to hit this issue. But while using golems, they burn out of VP very quickly in the early game leaving your party hamstringed until you can get to a health station to refill your points. You can buy potions later in this game that will top up your VP and negate this issue but you don't get them until like 20 hours in. Ok having a healthy amount of golems will help this but it took me a while to work out what was happening and the manual that you get with the game barely touches on this subject. Not right. Something's not right. But I will say the overall journey was a lot of fun. Enchanted Arms is a linear game, but there's a bit of backtracking and some side quest filler to pad out the time, but the overall adventure and seeing the world unfold is fun to witness. It does have that feel of that grand adventure which I love in RPGs and it should be an absolute requirement in these said games, because without a cool destination the journey doesn't mean shit. And while we're on the subject of side quests, there isn't much to do apart from the main story. There is a dungeon however in the same vein as the Chrysler building in Parasite Eve called the Holy Beast Shrine. An optional 12 floor marathon of increasingly challenging boss fights that was brutal but fun at the same time. This is where the VP system really starts to bite into you and you are constantly trying to manage it. And what you get out of this is some overpowered golems for your collection and a very special one in particular and it was the sole reason why I wanted to play this game in the first place. After hours of fights you get to unlock Michael Wilson, that's right the President of the United States from Metal Wolf Chaos and that is one of the best things I have ever seen. 
When I found out about this from a commentator on my Metal Wolf Chaos review, Plugo Plugo etc, I was instantly attracted to this game. I had to play Enchanted Arms. But guess what? Metal Wolf is only available on the Xbox 360 version, and take a good guess on what platform I was playing this game. Yep, that's right, the PlayStation 3. <sighs> yeah, I feel like an idiot, but honestly, I like this game so much, I'm more than happy to play it again one day. And he will be mine. Oh yes, he will be mine. Richard! Check me! But hey, the PS3 has disco dancing. Yeah. Yeah, fuck disco. So after all this, what do I feel about Enchanted Arms? I liked it, but it's hard to leave this game at a blanket recommendation. If you want something different from the more stable JRPGs like Final Fantasy, then I would say give this a shot. If you love great characters, then yes at first you will see they're a little bit shallow, but they will let you in after a while then yeah, go for this game. And fun, if not exploitable, combat. Then I would happily say you will love Enchanted Arms. Just go in with low expectations and you will be definitely entertained. It's fun, it's cheeky, it has some pretty intense moments, and it's really weird. It does have that From Software feel if you played any of their previous games. It has a lot of heart and you definitely feel it. So I hope you enjoyed my review of Enchanted Arms. Yes, it's a very weird game and it can have some cringy moments, but I really liked it and I think you would too. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned to the next episode of The Game Asylum.